right, counter punch boxing. Okay, look, I'm gonna give you guys your daily dose, Gennady Golovkin, Canelo Alvarez. And look, I apologize, it might be a little bit overkill, but like I said, I'm gonna bring a video every day, you know, pretty much every day, you know, with the, with the updates, latest, greatest. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna really cover it, you know, A to Z. So right now, the hot topics are the venue. Okay, the venue's a big deal because along with the venue, you know, comes the the poli or, or, or the the politics, the judges, right? So that's a big deal right now. The contract, okay? Because uh, we don't have a signed contract right now. According to Oscar De La Hoya, you know, we're all waiting on Gennady Golovkin. So that's a telltale sign. But look, look there's a lot there's a lot of issues here, but I, I'm, I'm just going to break them down. It's probably going to be a long video. You might want to break it in two. So I apologize if it's a little, little long. But like I said, we're going to give, you know, extensive coverage on this fight. So, uh, all right. So it looks like we have three possibilities. OK, Las Vegas T-Mobile uh, T-Mobile Arena being the strongest. OK. And, uh, of course, we know Golden Boy Promotion, they're really pushing him for that venue. Barclay Center, okay, this is uh, some new information here. Barclay Center, Madison Square Garden being number two, and my wishful thinking, of course, Cowboy Stadium being number three. Uh, but Tom Loeffler, you know, he is really pushing for New York, okay? So, you know, trying to keep, just basically trying to keep a, you know, keep it an even playing field, okay? Now, there is a strong presence of the Mexican community in New York on Cinco de Mayo weekend, okay, so it's a real possibility, you know, it's a, it'd be a good move, I think, and it, and of course, it'd be a happy medium between Tom Loeffler and Golden Boy, we all know they want to avoid Las Vegas at all costs, because right now, what's everybody saying, I mean, read any comment on any one of my videos, and all you're hearing is, well, you know, Gennady Golovkin needs a knockout to win, and, you know, they need to avoid Las Vegas. And of course, you remember, but if not, let me refresh your memory. Adelaide Bird, 118, 110, 115, 113 was Dave Moretti. And then the 114, 114 was, uh, I forget who that was. Um, can't think of it. But but that judge made a mistake. So, I mean, it, it was a horrible night for the officials. I mean, um, it was embarrassing. I mean, really. I mean, it, you can, they, I mean, t today, usually, look, usually a story dies off, okay? But the judging that night is still being talked about today. I read an article in Los Angeles Times they were talking about. I read an article on Forbes magazine. They were talking about Adelaide Bird and, um, you know, Boxing 24. It's like it's still an, a, an issue, a hot topic. Like it was that bad. OK, Gennady Golovkin. Now, here's another issue we have. OK, Gennady Golovkin will be 36 this coming April. OK, uh, Canelo Alvarez having a, nearly a 10 year age advantage over Gennady Golovkin. OK, so on fight night, uh, Canelo will be 27 years old, so nearly a 10 year gap. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that, that's a huge gap, but the question is, you know, did the eight month layoff, okay, benefit or hurt Golovkin? Same question for Canelo, you know, same question could be asked for Canelo and look, we all know here, here's what I thought about. We all know Abel Sanchez is a firm believer in light sparring. OK, he does not believe in, in, in you know, gym wars and, you know, just going there and, and banging it out, you know, going hardcore. You know, he believes, you know, you save it for the ring. Right. So, uh, you know, I don't know. And I, I thought about that. I'm like, oh, eight month layoff. You know, he's not really going to have any tough, you know, sparring sessions. Well, you know, is it going to take him a round or two, maybe three to, you know, to, to acclimate, to shake the rust off, whatever on fight night I'm talking about, you know, think about it. So that's a, you know, look, fighters, they need to stay primed, right? You know, they need to stay active. And I'm wondering, is that, is that why Canelo, you know, made that move, you know, that in, instead of having the rematch in December, waiting for, for Cinco de Mayo day, you know, did he think, well, you know, maybe we can, maybe we can add a little rust, you know, and uh, it might take him, you know, a round or two to shake it off. And, and the fight might be that close and, and Canelo wins by a round or two, you know, so every round, look, every minute in, in, in boxing counts, every minute, every round, every second, every punch, you know, every move matters. Okay. I mean, the, the thing I've learned about boxing Nothing is done on accident. There are no accidents, especially with, you know, big mega fights like this. So there's a reason they waited eight months is my point. OK, uh, now, according to uh, Bernard Hopkins, 
Canelo will make the necessary adjustments and mainly work on the stamina issues. So that way, uh, you know, he needs to fight more than 45 seconds or, or one minute of each round. OK, you know, we remember it was pretty much you got a three minute round and Canelo's maybe fighting one minute of each three minute round. OK, so uh, Bernard Hopkins said that's something they definitely will work on. And that way, you know, he can keep up with Gennady Golovkin because you, you had the older, you know, Golovkin, you know, pretty much uh you know his out outperforming him and i think a lot of that has to do with big bear you know training at that high altitude so um but to me now canelo like i said he needs to fight every minute every round well gennady golovkin he needs to be the he needs to be aggressive work the body you know cut the ring off uh putting together better combinations a simple one two one two three it's not going to work okay it didn't work in the first fight it's not going to work on this one he he needs to come forward let his hands go okay you know and, and here's the thing the golovkin that made him the you know the, the feared middleweight in boxing you know that we need to see that again okay we need to see that again but you know uh, again the question is did he did he get old overnight you know was 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 he simply overwhelmed not focused i don't know i mean i i think a lot can be said about kellerman's comments now I remember max kellerman before the fight he was saying that you know gennady golovkin appeared to be nervous right he was nervous he was uh you know they were saying that canelo was relaxed calm cool collective and gennady golovkin was nervous you know and he looked uh you know just uncomfortable okay so you know i don't I, and, I, and that's what i mean you got eight month layoff the age um you know, but I don't think he will be nervous in this next one. I think, uh, I don't, but, but I don't know. He, he needs to shake, like he, like I said, he needs to get rid of all that and, and just be, you know, be the most feared boxer on the planet. Like, like he is, you know, like we say, Kovalev needs to be crusher, you know, Pacquiao needs to be Pac-Man, you know, he needs to be that, that killer Gennady Golovkin and, and who cares who's it, it's Canelo, you know, and, and, and just forget that it's Canelo, you know, treat him like you did David Lemieux or, or, or Rosado, you know, or Stevens, you know, or, or, or Macklin, you know what I mean? Like Martin Murray, like, like get in there and do what you did against those guys, because he is capable of doing the, exa the exact same thing to Canelo, but it's all mental. I'm telling you, it's all mental. You know, he's physically capable of doing that to Canelo. So uh, now look, Canelo, he, most likely he's going to return to San Diego. He's trained there for his last eight fights. So, um, you know, they're, they, they, from what I've heard, they've got a lot of uh, running going on in the gym, working on stamina, uh, three sparring sessions per week. Now, that's a lot. So they're doing three sparring sessions per week. You know, uh, you know, you think you got a, a month and a half training camp. That's three, six, nine, 12, 18 or three, six, nine, 12, uh, 13, 14. That's like 18 sparring sessions in a six week training camp. That's a lot for Canelo. Uh, but Golovkin, of course, you know, his usual big bear, high altitude. And like I always tell you guys, it, it boxing is a cardio first sport okay it's all about stamina and it, th look this fight i'm telling you it's going to come down to stamina it really is uh and that mental you know those mental roadblocks you know i think golovkin needs to get rid of that mental roadblock and if look if canelo can improve his stamina even if he can fight two minutes of every every three you know golovkin might be in trouble i'll tell you right now i will tell you right now you know if Gennady, uh, Gennady golovkin if he might be in trouble if he doesn't go in there and, and be that killer, you know, so two guys, they got a lot of work, a lot of work they need to do. So it's very in interesting. We'll see what happens. But uh, now, <clears throat> now here's the thing. Should Golovkin walk away from the negotiating? Let, let's think about this for a minute. Okay. If Golden Boy is truly screwing him over, he could just simply walk away and go after the WBO. Okay. Because I guarantee you, Billy Joe Saunders is patiently waiting on the sidelines, hoping the rematch, you know, rematch falls short. Okay. Um, you know, even if Golovkin bluffed Golden Boy and started talking to Saunders, I, I, I think they would up their game, okay? Because it, it sounds like to me, Triple G isn't getting a fair deal, okay? And that's what it sounds like to me as far as him not signing the contract and all that. You know, and I don't understand why Canelo acts like the A-side. I mean, <laughs> the champion is automatically the A-side. I don't care how popular you are. You know, I don't care can, can, you know, I don't care how cool you are, how cool you think you are, whatever it is. You know, Gennady Golovkin is the champion. He's the a side and it drives it just drives me crazy the whole thing drives me crazy how how they treat uh golovkin you know especially the way they treated him in the original fight so uh 
you know, I don't know. And 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 what's Canelo going to do? Here's the thing. Let's let's say the fight doesn't happen, right? Let's say Gennady Golovkin goes after a Billy Joe Saunders, and you know what's Canelo going to do? You know he's basically, uh, you know, a, a taller David Lemieux. You know he's a five eight David Lemieux. Okay, and I read this in another article. They said you know he's basically a taller David Lemieux, and I started thinking about it. I was like, damn, you know they're right. You know, like the, the middleweight division is full of killers. Okay, I mean, what do you think? Jacobs would do to a Canelo or Charlo would, would do Billy Joe Saunders. And I'm not saying they would do more than Gennady Golovkin, but a prime middleweight is a nightmare for Canelo. Okay. In fact, you know, uh, I, I don't think he were, I don't, I don't even think Canelo will remain in the middleweight division. He's too small. You know, I've stood next to him several times. I've shook his hand. I've patted him on the back. I've interviewed him. I sat next to him for nearly two hours, not long ago during the Julio Cesar Chavez uh, press event. You know, Canelo is not a big guy. So, He's, he's really not. And, and actually, Chavez, even the drained down zombie Chavez, Chavez, was bigger than Canelo in person. I mean, I was right there with him. You know, Canelo is a very small middleweight. So, you know, what are their, what are their options? It, you know, right now, this is a big mega money fight. If they don't take this, what are they going to do, you know? And, uh, you know, here's the thing. And Golden Boy is putting Golovkin in a very bad position by not having a rematch clause. I don't understand him not having a rematch clause. I mean, he is a WBC, WIBF, IBO. And Canelo is Canelo, not as mandatory. I think he is like, like maybe for the WBC. But they're putting him in a terrible position. I'm talking about Tom Loeffler and Golden Boy. They're, they're, like, they all are. Golovkin's getting screwed here. Like, they need to, they need, he needs to have a rematch clause. And I think it's ridiculous that he doesn't. I mean, I mean, I mean, really, do you, do you think, honestly think that would that would like kill the fight if they demanded a rematch clause? If Tom Loeffler said, OK, look, we'll take a pay cut. We'll let you have your venue. We'll let you do whatever you want. But we want a rematch clause. If I lose my belts, I want a chance to win them back. OK, just like Kovalev, Andre Ward. I mean, it, it's insane that he does not have a rematch clause. So, uh, I mean, it drives me crazy, but uh you know, and and and, the, and that and usually, okay, usually when you're making a a voluntary defense of of you know your titles, usually you have a rematch clause. I mean, I went back and looked that you know at all the big fights, and there's always one. So I don't know. But, uh, you know, fight night, Canelo got booed by his own fans, okay? I'm just going to hop forward. He got booed by his own fans, okay? The ridiculous scorecards, you know, the 118, 110. After the third round, Canelo was basically running in survival mode, you know, then 11 and 12. He could only fight for maybe 30 seconds to one minute for each round and tried tried to end, you know, flashy and sharp and, uh, you know, that that's how it ended but you know i re i went back and watched it i actually scored it nine three golovkin originally i had it eight four golovkin i went back and my my real score which i don't even talk about is nine nine round nine three golovkin nine rounds golovkin three rounds canelo you know so i mean it's crazy but um now quickly i don't want to make the video too long um I mean, I could I could talk for hours and hours and hours, but I want to say something about Tom Loeffler just quickly. So, you know, just bear with me. I'm almost done here. OK, look, he needs to understand this is not the original fight. He has more bargaining power now than he did uh, in the original fight. OK, I mean, Canelo is not the champion. He's he's new to the middleweight division, for God's sakes. I mean, he, he's <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know, most people believe, you know, he lost the, the original fight. Uh, you know, and if they price if they price themselves out uh, or hand over ridiculous demands in the contract, the public will view that as a duck. OK, so I don't know why Tom Loeffler is worried or, or why he won't simply at least get a rematch clause. Right. I mean, I don't know. I don't understand why Tom Loeffler is allowing them to push him around. Like I said, right now, they're not in the same position that, that they had in the beginning. You know, in the beginning, you know, Canelo played all this A-side, A-side. Well, right now, Canelo is entering a rematch. And, and like I said, the majority of the public believes he lost. For, they believe he got robbed. It was a robbery, the corruption, you know, all that. You know, so they don't have that same bargaining power. And the public will know if they if they price Gennady Golovkin out or they just, like I said, they try to just give them these, you know, BS demands, the public will know, and, and it's a duck. Okay, it, it'll be. It's just like Canelo ducking Golovkin. So, I mean, Tom Loeffler, he needs to keep that in mind. He really does. Um, you know. So, uh, and, and, and and like I said, who else is? Can, where's Canelo going to go? Where's he going to go? Jacobs, Sa Saunders, Charlie? No, 
There's no way. Right now, Canelo needs Gennady Golovkin. More, really, more than Golovkin needs Canelo because uh, Golovkin ha has a gr another great uh, opportunity out there, Billy Joe Saunders. I mean, right now, most of the boxing fans, I mean, not me, but most of them, they want to see Golovkin, Billy Joe Saunders over Golovkin, Canelo. So who, w what does Canelo have? You know, David Lemieux was the backup plan, but... Uh, but that that got ruined, you know, that got just annihilated, <laughs> right, it's by Billy Joe Saunders. So, you know, Can Canelo doesn't even have a plan B. They need Gennady Golovkin. So they need to remember that when, when they're negotiating. So, um, you know. I don't know. But anyway, I'll probably leave it at that. You know, I can go on and on and on. But remember, I'll have a video out each and every day, uh, you know, just trying to bring you guys the, the latest, the greatest news. I'm going to make them a lot shorter in the future. But, you know, I really wanted to get a lot of that off my chest. You know, I don't I just it's I've, I've been thinking about it all night. And, uh, you know, I really didn't have I had a few notes in front of me today. Not many. But, uh, you know, hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video. Uh, and, and look, you know, if you're still out there listening, I doubt many people are but uh you know please look support the channel okay we're really trying to do something here you know this is uh for you not for me okay I, I don't make hardly any money doing this uh i do it for you you know who are whoever you are listening i do this for you it's a lot of work a lot of research a lot of studying uh it's it's it, it's, it's just a lot to put these little puny little videos together you know so i do it for you so please you know so just support the channel